And a big Tuesday welcome to you for LCPioneers.com Live, presented by PioStream, our first show of this week and the 18th week of doing the show since the last day of March until now the last week of July. We appreciate you being with us as we are able to share stories from student-athletes, coaches, alumni, and the Lewis and Clark College community four days a week, Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Facebook Live and archived on YouTube at youtube.com slash lcpios. Hello, I am Ryan Goff. I'm the play-by-play -play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark College. We are based out of Portland, Oregon, and a member of the NCAA Division III ranks, competing in the Northwest Conference against other institutions from throughout Northwest Oregon and the state of Washington, nine total institutions and 19 intercollegiate athletics teams at Lewis and Clark, and with over 430 NCAA Division III institutions nationwide a chance for our student athletes to compete on a national scale. Uh, we also, including today, will talk about overseas study. It's a tremendous opportunity for student athletes and students alike uh, to get a go around the world. And our guest today, Sira Starnes, a recently graduated Pioneers track and field student athlete, had the chance to travel last fall. So we'll ask her about a lot of her experience. I mean, she was all over the place. She even helped us on Pio Stream. She helped with athletic training, wrote for the Pio Log. Uh, math club, all sorts of stuff that she was involved in. And so what I like about uh, getting a chance to talk to her is we, we have a chance on the show to discuss routinely experiential liberal arts education. And I'm curious over four years what it was like for her. Also a uh, chance to travel overseas, as I mentioned, but a senior track and field season that was cut short too. Uh, we'll hear how things have uh, changed since mid-March, also after commencement in May what's ahead for her as well. So we're excited to talk to Sarah in just a little bit. Do invite you to get connected with the show. You can watch uh, on Facebook Live and comment in the comments below. You can also email us, sports at lclark.edu if you have uh, any sort of suggestions for future guests. We also invite you to connect with us on Twitter and Instagram. We are LC Pioneers on both of those platforms as well. Uh, we continue to roll out on lcpioneers.com our incoming 2020-21 student athletes and over the weekend had a chance to announce 19 new student athletes who are planning to join Lewis and Clark football. Uh, Jay Losey now entering his sixth year as the head coach announced that class over the weekend and you have a chance to read about them on our website lcpioneers.com and as we mentioned our YouTube page too, continuing to build our playlist of past lcpioneers.com live shows, uh, dating back to the last day of March with head coach of cross country, Matthew Burrow, and football's head coach, uh, Jay Losey, will join us probably next week, which means we'll have our second interview with Coach Burrow. Uh, we get around the horn uh, with our different coaches. We'll have a chance to talk to him some, coming up sometime uh, in the early part of August. And so with that, Said, let's bring in our guest for today. Again, a recent graduate of Lewis and Clark Women's Track and Field. Excited to bring in Sarah Starnes to the show. Sarah, appreciate you joining us and, and spending some time with us. Uh, recent alumnus, as I mentioned, graduated this past May, um, but you are also from Oregon originally. So I ask almost everyone who comes on the show, you know, what was it about Lewis and Clark that appealed to you? But also, as an in-state student athlete, what was it about coming to Portland for your your education? Yeah. So um, I was born and raised in Corvallis, Oregon. And so I kind of had an idea of Lewis and Clark and some of the other colleges in the area. So when I was going through the undergraduate application process, Lewis and Clark caught my eye just by being a school in the area. But the more I learned about the school and after my visit and the opportunities that presented themselves at Lewis and Clark, it really drew me into the school and it really surpassed some of the other schools that I was looking at for undergraduate. This and mentioned in the beginning, you know, I, I almost I, I won't have time to talk about all of the things that you were involved in over your time at Lewis and Clark. But my, my question to kind of summarize that is what was it about opportunities to have your chance to experience a whole bunch of different things at Lewis and Clark? You know, what was your motivation? Why was that something that you valued uh, to get out of your four years? Um, I figured that being in a community that provides all these opportunities, it would like it would almost be a detriment to miss out on some of those opportunities and I mean it's hard to do it all really but I feel like at Lewis and Clark you have the opportunity to to really do it all like being being a student athlete like I've had my hands in so many pots both academically and athletically and the opportunities that both of those provide 
mm-hmm. chemistry and uh, mathematics major, and you had your senior season cut short because of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, yeah. Commencement was held online. I have to imagine it was a huge adjustment and probably some disappointment. Uh, walk us through, you know, from mid March till the commencement ceremony. You know, what feelings were you going through? How hard was it to stay in touch with people, finish your coursework? Kind of describe that that two and a half month stretch. Yeah, I mean, as as most everyone knows, like it kind of like the situation grew a lot faster than we anticipated. And as far as sports goes, I remember it was that last Thursday or Friday before everything um, happened that we were just sitting like going out to practice and we're like, okay, this is, this is real. So I guess it was just like very abrupt. And so I guess like we all didn't really have a, like a true adjustment period. Um, luckily with after the aftermath and we moved into online and, and um, competition was suspended I was lucky to actually, so I lived off campus this past year and I lived with a few other student athletes and we could kind of like um, comfort each other. They were also seniors. And so we were able to kind of like still have that community, even though we were missing out on our seasons. Um, yeah, being being online for the past couple of months was really interesting, especially as a senior. I'm sure like some of the other um, like underclassmen, juniors, they had a totally different experience. But I guess as a senior, it's kind of like, okay, like, this is a very interesting experience to, like, how you, you, like, with graduation happening in May, you're, you know, like, when people are leaving and when, like, this community that you've had is kind of going to change a lot, Um, whereas with this past spring, we kind of came, kind of came out of the blue, and so we just kind of, I, I mean, in my case, I just kind of rolled with it, I guess, I stayed in touch with who I could, Um, yeah. She's Sarah Starnes joining us on lcpioneers.com live, a recent graduate of track and field program and a Northwest Conference scholar athlete. Um, I mentioned chemistry mathematics as your major. Um, what was that you know, path? Why was that something that you were going to pursue? And, and what were some of the highlights as you kind of summarize your last four years academically? Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, I came in thinking that um, I was going to be a bio major. I was just going to do pre-med and kind of just fall into like something that I had been planning since high school, which I guess for me, like the plans changed. So I, after my first semester or so, I switched to biochemistry because um, the classes and the classes that were presented and the opportunities that lay, that the major laid out for me look going forward into my four years and post Lewis and Clark was very appealing. And then I ended up switching to purely chemistry and then um, I honestly when I was in high school like everyone takes math classes and they I never really like imagined what majoring in math would be and so getting to college and having a different kind of course and different professors and the way that they approach the material really drew me in and I just became more enthralled with mathematics and how it played into my main studies with chemistry and so I I figure that I should just continue with it and it's been really beneficial and I'm really happy that I decided to do both majors. Well, and you, you touched on something that, you know, I, I see it come out of a lot of liberal arts experiences is, you know, freshman year, it's going to be this and sophomore year, it's going to be this. And you were able to pivot. I mean, was it difficult to have to make those transitions or is it set up well for you to be able to say, you know what? No, I was wrong. I'm going to go this direction. Yeah. Um, I'd say with, um, I guess with, the bio, biochemistry, chemistry, those classes already kind of overlap. And so when I deviated from my original plan, it was pretty easy to um, just keep the credits that I already had accumulated like in my first year. And what I really appreciated um, as far as the mathematics major goes, when I came in as a freshman and I had that summer advising appointment with um, the college advisor, she said like okay like you can take calculus too you don't need it for the bio major but if you perchance wanted to go into biochemistry or do something further with math like you should like stick with it if you want to and I really liked that they like because I was going in as a bio major they there wasn't an expectation that I was just gonna like forget about other classes that weren't necessarily 
requirements for the major. And so I really appreciated that there was this flexibility coming in. Now, nearly every single time on this show, we run different uh, videos that talk about the Lewis and Clark experience. And you're featured in one of them. You probably get more airtime than anyone this side of Frankie <laughs> Warden from softball, who's a, a classmate of yours. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, when, when you look back at the Rogers program, uh, for those who don't know, just describe the program in general and what were some of the mm -hmm. outcomes that you really are proud of or really you took away from that experience? Yeah, so um, the Rogers Summer Science Program is a 10-week research program that encompasses a few fields at Lewis and Clark. So I was in chemistry, there's bio biology research, there's mathematics research, and physics as well, um, and psychology. There's a, some really cool psychology labs that, are, that run research during that program as well. Um, and so basically... Ten weeks, they kind of walk them through their research. They can develop um, different projects on their own. Really, it really depends on the professor and the department that you're with. But um, what I really appreciated about the program is that you weren't just like in the lab all day doing your own research. They also presented the opportunity to share your research with other labs. So um, once every week, all of the lab programs over the summer would meet. That's about I want to say like a hundred people. Um, We'd all meet in one auditorium, and each week a couple labs would present on their research, and so we really had the opportunity to um, communicate our research to people who weren't necessarily in the same discipline, which I really appreciated. It was really cool to learn what psychology students were doing in their lab every day or um, what the bio students were doing. Mm -hmm. Sarah Starnes joining us on lcpioneers.com live. We are four days a week. You can see us at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time, Facebook Live, Tuesday through Friday, and then archived on YouTube.com slash LCPIOS. Um, now, you are someone who graduated a degree in STEM, right? I'm curious, you know, when it comes to women in STEM, what are some of the things that, you know, impacted you as to why you chose that kind of field of study? And, and how would you like to see, you know, more women in STEM or how to further that mission, if you will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I have to say that I'm very fortunate. The program at Lewis and Clark, I mean, Lewis and Clark as a whole has, um, I think, 60% um, people who identify as female. Um, so it's, I've been really lucky to have a program with um, a lot of women who are, like, their interests mirror my own. And that's kind of when I'm going into a field like chemistry or mathematics or STEM as a whole, that's very his um, historically male dominated. It's been very beneficial for me, myself, and my peers, my female peers, to have these role models who can demonstrate, like, oh, this is like, it, this doesn't have to be like how it has historically been. And going back to this Rogers program, this past summer, we went to the um, American Chemical Society conference here in Portland, Oregon, and there was a seminar kind of meet and greet of um this group of women in stem and they really um pro proposed the opportunity to create a chapter of of um kind of an inter interdisciplinary group of female scientists in multiple different disciplines and i guess that i'm kind of looking for that moving forward like as i go through my career and my postgraduate education looking for that kind of community, a school that, a school and community that kind of cultivates that and doesn't push um, women to the side, I guess. That's kind of more a historical standard as far as this field goes, but. Mm -hmm. Well, and you referenced, you know, even attending something in Portland, right? Mm -hmm. we, we discuss, you know, the, the proximity of Lewis and Clark to Portland. And you mentioned at the beginning, you know, growing up in Oregon, I'm sure you're familiar with Portland, but for those who don't, understand you know the the distance from campus to downtown and maybe some of the events that come to portland you know if you you saw that firsthand what kind of an advantage did you feel like that was yeah so i um portland isn't the largest city but it's the largest city in oregon and so it pulls a lot of major events there so i mean freshman year um freshmen aren't allowed to have a vehicle on campus but the opportunities to find transportation to get downtown, whether it's public transportation or the um, 
the the campus bus it's really really easy to take advantage of some of the events downtown whether that be concerts or trailblazers games or um timbers thorns game i mean not now but <laughs> in, the, in the past <laughs> but even just like going out and exploring the city seeing all like the small shops like coffee shops um i'd say one of my favorite things to take advantage of off campus was going to a coffee shop over the weekend and working on homework and yeah yeah and there's lots of things near campus one thing we plan to do in this show is have someone on who has extensive experience with selwood because selwood is one of the coolest areas uh in Absolutely. the portland area just on the other side mm -hmm. of the selwood bridge um mm -hmm. Let's do this. Uh, you know, I, I, I talked a little bit about the, the track season being canceled, but when you summarize, mm -hmm. you know, four years, a member of the track and field program, what are some favorite memories, maybe a story or two about just being part of that group and being part of that program? Yeah, um, I really I'm, I'm really thankful to have been a part of this program, even though it ended the way that it did. Um, track is kind of it's an interesting sport because it's individual yet it's such a team sport it's it can be really easy for different event groups or um like to become more separated it's very like kind of easy to just we're doing something else like we're on the other side of the track or like we're on the infield like we're not interacting with you guys but what i've really appreciated is that there's been more of a camaraderie between different event groups, especially in the past couple of years. Um, and just having a program that's small enough to where, like, you know, everyone on the team, like I've been on teams like in high school where the track team was so large, like you didn't know everyone. Um, and so I've really appreciated having a team that appreciate, like that brings together bonding and wants every member of the team to know each other and support each other. And so I guess one story a couple of years ago, um, I think it was my sophomore year, we were at a meet at Pacific and it was a really, it was one of the first meets of the season. It was very large events took hours to get done. And right at the end of the meet, um, we had one girl who was a couple years older, who was throwing shot put and everyone else was done. And we were just kind of waiting on her to get finished. But what I like, especially, so I'm a thrower and our event, like the fields, the sectors are usually far away from the main track itself. And so our teammates don't necessarily have the chance to come watch us compete. And so right at the end of the meet, when everyone else was done with their events, they had the chance to go and support um, this girl as she threw shot put at the end and they all cheered for her. And it was great because everyone was so tired. It was like the sun had gone down. It was like probably the longest meet I've had in a while. And it was really cool to see the team come out and support her. And, and you know, Lewis and Clark's campus uh, does attract like the Portland Track Festival. It's a very mm -hmm. nice facility for track and field. Although Absolutely. the throwers need more stuff, right? We need to get the yeah. hammer throw and the javelin on campus. But that mm -hmm. said, um, kind of give advice. If, if someone's never in, been to a track and field event, they feel like they can kind of be a little bit chaotic. How do you navigate that? What advice would you give to somebody maybe going to an event for the first time? Yeah, so I'd say um, get your hands on a meet schedule. It'll usually be pretty accurate as far as like the throws. Um, running events can change. I've, I'd say the first of running events are usually on schedule, but sometimes if the meet is large, they'll move into like a rolling schedule. And so it's more by ear when events are happening. Um, I'd say a lot of meets have people volunteering or working that can help you navigate the, um, the event space. Like at Lewis and Clark, we have students who um, work and they can help navigate where events are and stuff like that. I'd say just um, most events happen at a track with that's also a stadium. And so there are stadium seats and that's a great place to just kind of take a vantage point, look around, see what's happening, kind of get a feel of the situation and where the events are during the day. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and Lewis and Clark with PioStream were one of the only schools that does a full-fledged broadcast for a home meet. So if you ever do mm -hmm. have a chance to watch two, we try to get robo cameras so we can show the throwers, not just you know focusing on the stuff that's happening around the track, jumps and such as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's close with this. I mean, we're two months removed, just over two months removed from uh, commencement. What's ahead for you? What's next? Yeah, so actually in two days, I'm going to be leaving for graduate school. I'm attending the University of Notre Dame. Um, 
our semester is going to start early this year. So I start classes in the next couple of weeks, which is kind of crazy to go from this weird end of senior year commencement to just the beginning of grad school, just right off, right out the gates. But yeah, that's the plan so far. <laughs> well, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, appreciate all that you did. I mean, Thank I know you were involved with PioStream, but just everything on our, our campus, uh, in our departments, mm -hmm. you were great to have at Lewis and Clark. And gosh, hopefully sooner than later, uh, please come and visit us whenever you can, okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sarah Starnes, thanks so much for joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Yeah, she uh, was outstanding help for us in PioStream and uh, came in right away and, and had an impact. And one, one of those students who, uh, you know, no matter what we are asking them to do with as little of experience as possible. Sarah stepped up, she was willing to teach others. And then, you know, she went on to help in the athletic training room. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, right up for the Pyalog. She talked about being involved in math club. She even competed with intramurals. So it's a really neat opportunity at Lewis and Clark. And, and I liked how she talked about like, listen, I'm not gonna waste any chance that I have uh, to maximize my time at Lewis and Clark. And she definitely hit a home run with that. Um, Northwest Collar, uh, Conference Scholar Athlete, uh, Chemistry and Mathematics major. Um, and she definitely had success, uh, you know, throwing as well. Um, it, it really disappointed that she didn't get a chance to compete for her senior year. There was only one outdoor meet that happened uh, before coronavirus uh, postponed and then eventually canceled the season. So now one of those things where, you know, you, who knows where she would have been uh, in terms of her events uh, come at the end of this year. But uh, really grateful for everything that she did there. And that was a fun conversation with her. So best of luck at Notre Dame too. Uh, and, and yeah, I remember uh, hearing that Notre Dame was one of the first institutions to talk about starting their academic year early. So she's going to be underway with classes uh, before she knows it. Good appearance. That was a lot of fun. Mark Figueroa joins us tomorrow. He is our Dean of Equity and Inclusion at Lewis and Clark. As of right now, we haven't secured a Thursday or Friday guest. So uh, this may be our last live show for this week. We will certainly re-air uh, some shows coming up at the end of the week too. And then we already have some guest books for uh, guests booked for next week. So certainly we'll have some live guests, but really excited to talk uh, to Mark tomorrow. Uh, describe you know, what his department offers, what his office offers for not only current Lewis and Clark students, faculty, staff, everyone in the community, but also for the past uh, people who have been at Lewis and Clark, uh, we'll have an idea of what his office offers and some of the focus that it has going forward into 2020-21. So until we we'll talk to you again tomorrow, uh, big thanks to Sierra for joining us. I'm Ryan Goff. Thanks for having fun with us today. And we will talk to you again tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time for more lcpioneers.com live, streaming live on, face on Facebook and archived at youtube.com slash lcpios and as promised uh, we're going to play a serious feature in our brown bag uh, research spot that we have definitely aired throughout the course of this show but want to have a chance to hear her explain to a little bit more about the brown bag research and the rogers program uh, opportunities at lewis and clark so we'll play that now and we'll see you again tomorrow goodbye everybody I'm Ann Bentley. I'm an associate professor of chemistry. And in this research group, I supervise the two students working in the Rogers program this summer in our lab. The Brown Bag Experience is a good chance for students to get experience presenting their work that they've done in the lab, especially to an audience that's not technical. What's intriguing about the Brown Bag Experience is it incorporates all of the Rogers program. So I'm able to hear people in the psychology department and what research they're doing, but it also gives us, gives us the opportunity to share our research with the greater science community at Lewis and Clark. And for incoming students, um, the summer program is really beneficial for getting opportunity in research. So um, I've had the opportunity for research in the past, but other students may not have the same opportunities. So it's nice to work in a professional lab setting and potentially have the opportunity to publish a paper, which looks really good moving on into uh, doing um, professional research out in the field. The students grow a lot during the summer in their ability to learn the techniques and apply the techniques and suggest their own ideas for what could come next and interpret their data. It's just a big, if, usually if they haven't done research before, they learn a lot in that short period of time. I think everyone should take an uh, intro to chemistry because um, the chemistry department here is phenomenal. Um, 
everyone I've known has had a good experience with everyone in that department, so I think it was a worthwhile course to take. What is one class that everyone should take at Lewis and Clark? Um, I really enjoyed education in a complex world. You kind of get to discuss all the issues that exist within education today, and you get to kind of explore that by going to classrooms firsthand and volunteering with children, which I thought was a really wonderful experience. One class that everybody should take at Lewis and Clark is anything with Kuhn Dietrin, though. Um, I think he definitely changed how I thought about rhetoric and media studies and just education in general. For me, it was international affairs, just intro to international affairs, because I think uh, it really gives a good perspective on important issues around the world.